Alright guys, that's where I'm again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Nature's got the sub button back on Twitch and he's been absolutely going off over the last few days. Chirping back at Scrappy last night. Very entertaining content. But also, the Seattle Surge have confirmed their new player for their roster. They've not, however, confirmed which player was actually making way from the team. This arguably raises more questions than it answers on this whole Illy situation. Very much enjoyed to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. First of all, it was confirmed last night during the flank, well, via sources, or potentially by Sib in the Twitch chat saying that this is now happening. So in the last few days, there's been lots of debate on the new DLC weapons, whether they're too powerful, whether they are not. Rumor has it that Optic and Thieves, they were the two teams in favor of having the DLC guns in. We even saw last night that Shotzi said that as far as he was concerned, there was a potential four-weapon meta in play with these guns in the game. The pros, as is usually the case, decided that they don't want any change at the status quo, and the majority of teams voted these guns to be gone. Maybe they're too powerful, but I'm not really sure the pros tested them long enough to really know on this one. So Thieves wanted them in, Optic wanted them in, apparently basically every other team wanted them gone. Now Sir Boozer actually does say, sad face, maybe he wanted them to stay as well. So kind of confusing what's going on, we never really get to know. You would think that you'd need 9 of 12 to ban them because if you're going to add something to the GA list, officially, you need 9 of 12 teams to agree. So maybe we had 9 of 12 and it was Optic Thieves and maybe Surge that said no because I've seen this tweet from Abuza, this one from Afro, and then of course this is from Thieves and then we saw Dashi the other day getting into it with Scrappy, right? So it is frustrating that this has happened in the way that it's happened and we always blame the pros to some degree and maybe if we go really hard as a community on this one we might force them to change their minds it's somewhat doubtful but we've managed to do that in the past but at the end of the day it shouldn't really be on the pros to make these decisions the pros don't do the best job of this absolutely they don't do the best job of testing the maps i mean we heard last night on the flank as well that the boys were like well did we even test rio control not actually sure that we did so they don't do the best job of this stuff but the cdl doesn't help the case really they don't have some sort of commission that makes these decisions i don't really think it should be on the pros to decide this at the end of the day it also shouldn't really be on the pros to decide what the map pool is they shouldn't be voting certain maps in or out. The league and some sort of commission should be deciding what maps are in, what maps are out, based on testing and feedback that is given but at the end of the day, it shouldn't be up to, you know, gentlemen's agreement representatives in a group chat making the decisions. That's how it was back in the really grassroots days. You would think that in, like, the fifth year of this professional $300 million franchise league, there would be a better way to go about these things than you know, a representative in a group chat trying to make a case and then, you know, basically gets decided in a Twitter DM. I mean, it's really not, I think, what is the ideal case scenario. We've got to talk as well, though, about the Seattle Surge. This, to me, is quite fascinating. We saw the rumours yesterday now confirmed that Brezzy is going to join Surge. Of course, French player, the last time he was really in the league was like four years ago. When, well, actually, technically, he was on Paris Legion way back at the start of the league when I don't think he ever started, though. That was the team with, like, Dens and Zed and those guys, like Luca, right? That had that kind of, like, mixed team with the Australian fellas and Brezzi I think was actually one of the subs back then but he never got a starting opportunity and the most recent real like top level tournament that he played was the Black Ops 4 World Championship where he came top four with Enigma 6. He's played a lot since then has proven to be a very solid player and I think it's a honestly given all the options his history with the Boozer last year's Wobobobs team or whatever good experience good player solid player can run the SMG so a Boozer can probably run more so an AR and I think Brezzi can do a very solid job. The issue is that we believe that he's replacing Illy on the roster and Illy was their best player hands down there's not even a debate about it so why is he replacing Illy and also why aren't the Seattle Surge saying anything about it usually when a roster change is made you will say okay player X is moving to the bench or player X is being released because that's what's happened with Boston with Thieves with all these other teams they say thanks for your time Cami but it's time to go thanks for your time of course they also release Jonas Eves he's gone to the bench though right so they said thanks for your time Jonas Eves you're now on the bench you might come back and then Capsadol from Boston they told him yep you're released officially you're out of the team so just said nothing like that we simply don't know what's going on which players even replaced they haven't said it's Illy we believe it's Illy those are the rumors that it's going to be Illy even I know a couple of guys pointed out to me some words that Asti said in a Twitch chat where um, Asti says my representative said no comment at this time so you know on the whole Illy situation in and of itself I must say this does also remind me of what's happened with Illy when 
when he was released by Optic Texas a couple of years ago. So you guys might remember the story. At the end of 2022, Optic decided to blow up their team. But they decided that for about 24 hours before Scump got a call from Formal or something, whatever it was, and they decided to get the boys back together. So Illy was officially dropped from Optic. They did a tweet releasing Illy, saying goodbye, going, you know, good luck going forward or whatever. And Illy replied and said, I'll see you all next year type thing. And then within 48 hours, the team was back together anyway. The next time Illy was dropped, though, a short while later, they never actually said anything. They did do a tweet, Optic, releasing Rambo. After all, the Rambo actually dropped went down. A couple of months later, they said, goodbye, Rambo. You know, it, it's been a pleasure wishing you the best and all this. But it never said anything to Ellie. And I mentioned it several times, not because it really annoyed me, but just because I was like, why did Optic never officially say goodbye to Ellie? They just kind of ghosted him and let him go on into the future. And now, like, Serge, are, are they not kind of doing the same thing? At least for now. Like, they've not said anything on Ellie. And I feel like it's better to say something than not to say anything at all. I don't know if you guys agree with me really on it, but like, I think Serge, it's better for them to make some sort of statement. Whether all you say is like, look, Illy's moving to the bench and you don't give a reason, like, I think that's probably better than nothing. But even just say, look, Illy's moving to the bench. We, um, you know, still consider him as part of the team and he's still an option for the rest of the season. Like, you know, something would be better than just ghosting Illy and pretending that he doesn't exist because we're pretty sure that Illy's the one to be making way for reasons that are almost certainly not in-game performance related because he's been the best player and there's been other, you know, drama as to what exactly this might be. But then, of course, it raises further questions as to whether this is a surge decision or whether this is like a league decision. Like, has he been, we don't know, has he been suspended by the league? Like, it's a speculation people have been throwing around. There's no basis behind it, but people are talking about it. And, you know, if surge made some sort of statement, I think it would calm down some of the discussion. So I just find this whole situation really strange. Strange. We're all wishing the best for Illy and what's in the future. And I think, to be honest, Surge absolutely need Illy in their team if they are to be as good as they can be. Brizzy can be a solid player, but at the end of the day, if you've still got, you know, Arsatis and, and whatever in that role, he's not been so good. If you had Illy and Abuza and Hukens and Brezzy, maybe we're talking about something there, but I just don't see how whatever Brezzy does and the role changes they might make there internally to maybe put Abuza on the main, that should take a step. But you lose Illy, you lose a lot of your search and destroy prowess as well where they've you know that's really where their results have come from so I think this surge team is in a tough spot I'm sure if I'm Rambo if I'm the team I want to get Illy back in the roster maybe there's things you know there's clearly things going on externally that they've got to deal with but I'm hopeful that if I'm surge they can get him back but if surge just aren't going to say anything and never address it and they're going to turn up to play their matches in the league and say yep Brizzy's here now nothing to say on like where Indra actually went and then they just don't address it forever it's like come on I, th I think we've got to say something on this whole story to be honest we've got to dive into though the Najot versus scrappy drama this is pretty funny a few of you guys have pointed out to me as well actually I got a lot of tweets about this I thought it was pretty hilarious on the top 250 on the ranked play leaderboards scrappy's been grinding his way up there and as you guys can see on the right hand side and scrap wasn't so happy about this either on stream when he saw this that here he is at 231st place on the top 250 and for some reason he's been listed under the New York subliners I think it's cool like first of all that it's possible for these guys to be linked again to certain teams. I know that Standy as well is still linked to Vegas, which he's not particularly happy about. But I don't really know how this actually happens, that Scrappy ends up on the subliners. I guess somebody's made a mistake somewhere. But um, it's just one of these things, isn't it? We constantly talk about, oh, the Seadells made this error, they've made that error. And this is another one which is not ideal. And uh, you know, I'm sure Scrappy's going to make the complaints where that might be necessary. But also, Scrap and Nature have been going at it over the last few days. Scrap is beefing with everyone, and he doesn't, uh, well, shy away from beefing with anyone. And there was even some interesting talk on the flank yesterday about how Scrappy's mindset and his mentality on winning and, you know, trying to be the best that he can be has actually helped him an awful lot as a player. I think his talent is certainly part of it. I think playing with great players is also certainly part of it. But I don't think Scrappy would have looked as good as he did do on that Toronto Academy if he didn't have, you know, the mentality and the mindset that he does in terms of being the best. And, uh, you know, Nature, of course, given all the success he's had, has had a similar mindset in his day as well. So, Bit of a back and forth there between the both of them. The insults here from Najot are pretty legendary, I'm not going to lie. Talking about how back in Najot's day, when the game played differently to how it does today, Najot, you know, would have put Scrappy in the ground and was the absolute king. And then hitting Scrappy, of course, with the classic, uh, you know, neck-related insults. Yo, Scrappy, just know, though, when this game was moving at 30% on f***ing Black Ops 2, I was putting you in the f***ing ground, all right? Six feet deep, you heard? Five feet for the body, one whole f***ing foot for the neck, dude. Shit stain.
All right, guys, let's do it. You can never say you made me retired. You're off. All right, brother. Yo, but symbols and scrap. This goes for both of you. If you guys want to get carried by me and bows ever again, just hit me up, man. I'll be grinding. Yeah, Nate, you're actually you know? worse than I thought, so I appreciate playing with you, bro. Turn up, man. Yeah, bro. I'm just trying to meet your expectations or not. Yeah, of course. Yo, Scrap, what's up, that class, brother? Yo, hey, you fun, are bro. awful, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> you get <laughs> turned on every <laughs> life. <laughs> Yo. So good entertainment as always from this guy. I thought it was nice as well to see Najot back in business on the stream again. He's obviously had his uh, daughter, right? So that he's, well, he was on like paternity leave or something from 100T. There's questions about 100T as an organization as well when Najot kind of hasn't had such a leading role in the organization. What the future is there. The fact that LA Thieves have been one of the teams taking the budget cuts because of course we have seen over the last couple of years, lots of teams have scaled back their operations in terms of spending. But some organizations haven't like optic is still paying the big bucks to Pred and the other guys phase have had some salary cuts but they're still paying a fair bit and there seems like subliners and you know a couple of others that still have the funding thieves aren't one of those teams to have been able to do that so and probably that's smart business at the end of the day given the circumstances but there has been some talk about you know the 100 thieves organization is it in as healthy a state as it was a couple of years ago they had juvie they had the other like things they're working on their video game and they've all like basically separated that from their core business just because it's costing too much money and we're not living in a fancy land anymore when VC cash is flowing wild as it was in 2020 and 2021 and even arguably just slightly before I thought it was good though from nature as well as uh, Glake Frosty says so for this weekend's Challengers Cup which of course there's been some drama about it because the CDL have deliberately set the deadline for changing the map set right before the new maps arrive just so that the Challengers Cup map set stays the same. I thought Octane made a good point on this as well, that Sledgehammer have been, and I'm not sure I agree with all of Sledgehammer's decisions, like, you know, the changes to Karachi and stuff like this. I think in some senses their overhaul went somewhat too far. But in terms of a developer that isn't Treyarch giving us competitive support, this is the best that we've, like, ever seen ever from Sledgehammer, and they deserve a lot of credit for doing so. The frustrating part is that Octane pointed out that, well, they've given us all these great new maps, and they're designing good maps for competitive, and yet when they arrive into the game, the league says, yeah, sorry, we can't use those. Like, it's going to be another month. It just feels like self-sabotage at the end of the day for what could be, you know, a good revitalization to the scene so far. Thankfully, there is Rio. So at least we have that to look forward to when the scene is officially back. But um, yeah, so 100T, I think, have agreed to let Glow Frosty play at their facility, which is all really good stuff to see. But very much interested your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care. And I'll see you next time. What's up, you sick? Yo. Yeah. What's up, man? What? Okay. We got some. Well, I have some. I have some potential bad news. What do you mean, dude? So, so Colt Havoc hit me up to play today, and I'm torn on what I should do, man. Are you on me right now? Don't don't guilt trip me. Wait. Don't start uh, with that. Oh wait, are you being dead ass serious? Dead ass serious. You gotta be fucking with me, <laughs> dude. What are you talking about? Are you actually tight? It's my first day back. You're not going to play with Havoc, bro. I don't care Dude, what. what. I've been grinding for a f week and a half off stream to make sure I can play with you guys. Get my rank. We got a new season. You're telling me you, uh, the flavor of the month, this guy's rank number one, and you're going to go play with him after oh a decade? Flavor of the month. <laughs> Yo, Bro, that is the wildest comedy. calm that I ever heard. There was no, hey, congrats comedy, on the sub right? button back. Like, I'm excited to play. The first thing you say to me is I got bad news. I'm going to play with well, Moptop no, over there. No, no, I haven't made my decision yet. My Trump decision is flavor of the month. I haven't made a decision yet. I'm just saying I, I don't know what I'm going to do here. Oh, I'm waiting for you. Awkward, I, I'm waiting for you to tell me that you're with me. I don't think you will. That's the issue here. Oh man, dude, come on, man. What's up? Do no, do you think, bro? You're the king. You're the king. Do you think? Wait, 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 dude. How, uh, dude?